Oh, actually, wait, before I do this, I should probably give a headphone warning. Headphone, headphone warning. <clears throat> Yay! Yo, I'm gonna need you guys to rate that in the comments, because uh, I'm not gonna lie. I think that was my first time ever letting out a ye. Anyway, first, let me go ahead and give a shout out to The OG Twister, a movie that came out before I was even swinging back and forth as a blanket wrapped baby, a movie that I have obviously never seen, and from what I can tell so far, a movie that wasn't really in the demand for a sequel, but they must not have gotten the memo. We're in the lack of creativity Hollywood era, baby. Anything goes around these parts. And in reality, when it comes to an almost 30 year old franchise getting an opportunity at a random kick ass sequel only a week before the most highly anticipated movie of the year comes out, well, just like the movie proudly wears on its chest, that's just the American dream. And while this movie might leave you with the feeling of wanting to test the dangers of off roading with your best gal pal and your best pair of douchey sunglasses, that's kind of all this movie really has going for it. But is that really a bad thing? Twisters is one of those movies that I didn't really know what to think or have any real expectations going into it whatsoever. I mean, sure, the trailers looked pretty cinematic and explosive. The disaster genre has been a rather hit or miss type of an experience in terms of quality over the last decade, but that's to be expected. And it's not like I personally had that nostalgia experience of the classic 90s feel of that small budget escapism movies with the feel good relatable characters and incredible practical effects to go off of. If I'm being completely honest, it's just one of those summertime blockbuster movies that's just here to tickle your fancy before the big dogs show up to finish the job. And for the most part, I would say Twister shows their commitment to the audience and its attempt at being one of the best summertime appetizers you could ask for. For a movie that literally has its plot in the title, I was pretty surprised how relatable and nuanced they were able to make our main cast of three. Mr. Douchebag, I guess, just kinda comes with that kind of charm at this point. But obviously, the main draw was the Twister set pieces. The marketing had no problem showing us how dedicated to the craft the team was when it came to how realistic and immersive they wanted the disaster sequences to be. And man, let me tell you, do the Twisters not disappoint. For someone who lives on the coast and does not experience the absolute devastation these swirling behemoths leave in their path, it is no joke. And I would surely be one of those dumb blokes that try to outrun it as if I can even outrun my overweight rabbit. I guess what I'm trying to say here is that for the audience members that might be on the fence or feel as if they have to do a little bit of homework in order to really enjoy themselves with this sequel, that is not the case. And I think Twisters really debunks the mold of how you can handle a sequel with this many gap years in its entertainment value. The Ghostbusters franchise could have really used this model before they ran themselves into the IP sunken place, but what are you gonna do? I don't want to yap for too long because I do actually have some words that might be some hot takes. I could also just be out of the game for a really long time. So with that, let's just go ahead and get into Man, I actually probably should have asked this at the beginning, but will I get canceled or channel striked if I say the word tornado in this video? It seems like it's kind of a taboo thing to do. Actually, never mind. We're just not even going to open that can of worms. Also, I'm not going to remember all of that weather talk mumbo jumbo that was thrown around in this movie as if anyone in the audience knew what the fuck they were yapping on about. So we're going to keep this pretty low IQ. Twisters follows our Oklahoma girl Kate after a tornado. Oop, see, I just did it. I just did it. Twisters follows our Oklahoma girl Kate after a twister experiment gone wrong, leaving her with pretty understandable PTSD after witnessing and feeling responsible for the death of her friends, crew, and love interest at the time. Fast forward five years later, Kay has become a city girl in the Big Apple when after reconnecting with her past friend and only other surviving crew member Javi, Kay and her supergirl twister instincts are recruited to join Javi in his new business in order to map the twisters so they are able to predict more weather mumbo jumbo. Pretty much they just want to save lives. With Kate being pretty reluctant to the idea at first, she ends up joining the crew in Oklahoma where she finds herself running into Mr. Douchebag Tyler Owens, a sunglass wearing bloke who eats charm for breakfast and chases twisters for the views and the fuck of it. Or so it seems. With that, the rest of the movie pretty much plays out exactly how you would think. A narrative that's simple enough to keep the pace going for our TikTok brain audience, a love story that is only really believable because it's Glenn Powell, and Twister's so massive and destructive that it truly makes you wonder why people still live in Oklahoma if not for the Sooners. Welcome to the SEC, you fucks. It's interesting because I don't really know if I should get into my hot take first or if I should actually give my genuine thoughts. No. 
actually let me cook so I can get cooked. Don't get me wrong, this is a pretty specific nitpick, but it was the first thing that me and my mates talked about when leaving the theater, so it's just been on my mind. Obviously, Glenn Powell has the looks, charisma, and path to becoming an A1 star in this industry. There is no question about it, especially because we are in a time where the movie star is truly becoming a myth and an idea of the past. But dude, maybe it's just an Oklahoma girl thing, but yo, try showing up to some chick's house out here on the coast after only knowing her for like a day or two just to casually let her know that it was just a simple internet search to get her address. <laughs> what the fuck is going on there? <laughs> <laughs> yo, I was, I was shocked. I immediately text homegirl like, yo, just imagine if some dude just admitted to getting your address off the internet and it just working. <laughs> what? That's, that's actually insane. And there's just no way that that would fly out here. But again, it might. That's just the Glenn Powell effect. Mr. Douchebag at its finest. But when you actually get into his character, he's not really asked to do much but play himself. But as a studio, do you really want him playing anybody else other than himself? I don't really think it's a good way to go about marketing yourself because looks can only get you in the door. But the way that the movie was marketed, it was relatively obvious that he was the draw, the face, the star of the movie. And for what it was, I would say it's another small check mark on delivering what was asked of him to add on his resume. Kate and Javi try their best to live up to the overwhelming on-screen charisma, but all three are easily overshadowed by the sheer presence of each and every twister. Again, as someone who has never experienced and plans to continue never experiencing a wind of death that is a twister, kinda like with Dune Part 2 or Oppenheimer, this is definitely a movie worth experiencing in IMAX. The quality of the sound, the swirling and powerful winds that frankly don't give two shits about whatever it's in its path, it was both epic and, in a way, heart-wrenching to watch because while the movie for sure delivers on the entertainment aspect for us, the audience, it also found a way to shed light and really showcase the aftermath of how devastating these natural disasters really are. But at the same time, watching a community come together in its most time of need brings your spirits right back up in order to get to the next Twister scene. It's a greatly paced but never-ending cycle of catastrophes and freaks of nature that Twisters really are, and it's not that hard for me to say that you'll more than likely enjoy yourself by the time the end credits come rolling along with that one last white dude screaming in your ear about America. It's fucking awesome. So in a ranking tier list that is still a name in progress, one of my boys actually wanted me to put this in the Toontown category solely because of Glenn Powell's character looking up Kate's address online, which I can respect, but because I also respect the nameless tiers and have craft and integrity for this channel, pretty much making me an international hero, Twisters is easily an actual movie, and unfortunately a movie that came out right before Big Brother decided to come home for the summer. I mean, it could give it a boost at the box office, but honestly, your guess is as good as mine. Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video, and if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I'll leave a link to my Twitter and letterbox in the description below just in case you guys want to go check that out. Again, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you did enjoy, why not click on more while you're at it? Otherwise, that is all the words I got for you today. Bye.